The McLaren 720S claims to be the segment's most complete supercar. More capable, more compliant, and more complete than anything the brand has previously brought us. There's nothing else quite like it. In its own small but significant way, McLaren is redefining the ultimate end of the exotic sports car market. And here's proof in the form of the most important model this British brand's ever made, the 720S. And it's the company's mid-range Super Series model. Uh, that working maker's Sports Series 540C and 570S contenders sit just below this car, and the rare and exclusive Ultimate Series McLaren Senna is positioned just above it. Categorizing this car as a McLaren then is straightforward. Positioning it as a sports car though is far more difficult. The legendary industry names that rule this market have loosely defined it into three segments in recent years. If you're spending in the 110 to 170,000 pound bracket, you'll be looking at super sports cars like faster Porsche 911s and Audi R8s. Stretch up towards the 200,000 pound price point and there's the opportunity for ownership of a fully fledged supercar, a Ferrari 488 GTB, or if you have a bit more, a Lamborghini Aventador perhaps. Beyond that, if you have more than half a million to spend, then collectible hypercars for billionaires beckon. So where does that leave us with the 720S? Priced against those Ferrari and Lamborghini models, yet offering performance that's worthy of a seven-figure hypercar. Well, it blurs the boundaries and rewrites the rule book in ways that we'll try to explain in this film. Perhaps more importantly though, it aims to redefine just how fast a road car can be, while still continuing to be a credible form of conveyance rather than just a racer with a reg plate. Now, the two earlier McLaren models that showed most promise in that regard were the cars that have led the brand to this one, uh, the MP4 of 2011 and its replacement, the 650S of 2014. The 720S is the next stage in that evolution and it's the first of 15 new generation models that should be launched by the company over the next five years, each hand built at a 50 million pound state of the art factory in Woking. It gets an all new carbon fiber chassis, revised suspension, a new era cabin, and a larger four liter twin turbocharged V8 engine developing 720 PS, hence the model name. And it aims to involve and satisfy you in a way that no competitor can. So what's it like? Well, once the instrument display is rotated into place, you've got comfortable in the figure-hugging sports seats, a prod on the central starter button, sees that twin-turbo V8 outback barking gruffly into life. Is there the evocative thrill you'd get from, say, a Lamborghini V12 or even an Audi V10? Well, not quite. Still, thanks to the embellishment here of the pricey optional sports exhaust system that most owners tend to specify, there's quite enough aural drama to excite you for the experience that you're about to enjoy. Formula One legend Ayrton Senna once talked about the way that when you find the limit of what a car can do, you suddenly discover it's possible to go much further. And then, in his words, you can fly very high. So it's been with the cars that over the last decade have represented the pinnacle of what McLaren can achieve for mainstream production. Uh, the MP4, the 650S, and now this, the 720S. Now on the face of things, you might think that the formula this time around is pretty similar to what went before. And sure enough, uh, as with the original MP4, there are carbon fiber underpinnings. Uh, Ricardo Engineering developed a V8 out back, and that's mated to a seven speed dual clutch automatic gearbox, the whole thing tuned by selectable active dynamics driving modes. Now, that was the limit back in 2011. This is where it is now. This car is astonishingly intoxicatingly and deliciously rapid, as you'd expect it would be given that the headline of this 720S is its power figure, 720 PS or 710 BHP in old money. That's courtesy of a fundamentally revised engine that for the first time has been stroked out from 3.8 to 4 litres. 
A few decades ago, F1 cars couldn't give you that kind of power. Now true, you do have to work to get everything this new era M840T power plant has to offer. A peak torque of 770 newton meters isn't delivered until you get to 7,500 RPM, but it's worth it, even if, as we've already mentioned, uh, the V8 isn't quite as thundery as you hope it might be. As a wealthy buyer in this segment, uh, we'd certainly miss the emotive hollow blarp of a rival Ferrari. But all that pales into insignificance once you start to crunch the numbers. Uh, the three second dead rest to 62 miles an hour sprint time uh, that applies to the old 650S and this current model's Ferrari 488 GTB arch rival gets reduced by this 720 to just 2.8 seconds. But so what, a tenth here, a tenth there. I mean, the next model down in the McLaren range, the 570S manages 62 miles an hour in 3.2 seconds. What instead if we were to tell you that 100 miles an hour flashes by faster than you can get to 60 in something as quick as a Civic Type R and that you could let that Ferrari 488 get to 60 before even starting off in a 720S and still beat that Maranello model to 170 miles an hour. Perhaps you can make it simpler still. In real terms here, you're getting the performance of a million pound hypercar, say a Bugatti Veyron, McLaren's old P1, maybe a Porsche 918 Spider from a mere supercar segment model. Simply to call this car fast just doesn't cover it. But then you probably knew it would be. What's even more important to understand as a potential buyer is that this car is more agile than its predecessor and that's thanks to an 18 kilogram weight reduction, uh, also a lower center of gravity and greater torsional rigidity. That comes courtesy of the new Monocage 2 central structure that for the first time sees the upper part of the cabin cell fashioned from carbon fiber rather than from bonded aluminium. Now arguably even more important are the two things that set this Super Series McLaren apart from the lesser sports series models like the 570S. Now firstly you get special active aerodynamics and they're delivered this time around via an even more enormous hydraulically operated rear wing and that deploys under hard acceleration and it also raises automatically when you slam on the anchors. And the purpose there being to shift the aero balance by 20% to improve high speed braking stability. Also redeveloped for the 720S is the other determiner of McLaren Super Series status, the chassis control system, Proactive Chassis Control 2, which removes the need for anti-roll bars by hydraulically linking the dampers. It's a much more sophisticated solution than the conventional adaptive spring and damper setup that you get with the 570S. With Proactive Chassis Control 2, Cambridge University developed algorithms, constantly analyze body dynamics and wheel motion motion before taking just a couple of milliseconds to adjust suspension dynamics accordingly. Uh, you can influence this yourself of course, but to do that you'll need to get yourself familiar with the workings of the active dynamics panel and that's just to the right of the central infotainment screen. Press this active button and you'll be able to access the settings of these two rotary controllers. The upper one's designated H for handling and that means it deals with the settings for that suspension setup and also for the steering feel. The lower dial here is branded P for powertrain and that means in using that you're going to be influencing throttle response, um, exhaust note and the gear shift timings that you'll want to oversee via these big paddles perfectly situated behind this chunky wheel. Uh, each Active Dynamics controller has three modes, C for comfort, S for sport and T for track. Ah oh yes, track work. Well, you'll really have to engage in some to get the most from owning this car. Uh, use the track modes and you'll get yourself the option of playing with another fresh feature developed for this 720, uh, McLaren Drift Control. Now, Ferrari has a similar system. They call it Side Slip Control and the objectives here are similar. A simple slider on the center dash touchscreen allows you to dial in as much rear end drifting angle as you feel comfortable with before letting rip and burning away the tread of the pricey Pirelli P0 Corsa rubber. Uh, it is still, however, not something to be undertaken by the faint hearted. Swipe all the way around and you're going to need to be ready with some corrective lock. Now if you're into all that then you'll absolutely love the idea of the extra cost McLaren telemetry setup and that uses cameras from the optional 360 degree surround view system to record circuit laps that you can then play back and analyze on the cabin's central screen. It's brilliant. 
But then all supercars feel good on the track. What's so amazing about this one is the great extent to which you'll enjoy it even if you're just cruising around. It's really no harder to drive than something like a Porsche Boxster and in its softest comfort setting this 720S rides the bumps better than some family hatchbacks we've driven. And that is one of the things that makes this car a much better prospect for long distances than some of its rivals. It's surprisingly good at short commuting trips too, or at least it is once you allow for the really low ride height. Now the optional nose lift system that lets you raise the front suspension by 40 millimeters at speeds of up to 37 miles an hour, it really is essential. Otherwise, this car's a much easier urban partner than many of its rivals, and it's helped by the fact that the throttle pedal isn't unduly sensitive, and all round rear three quarter vision is vastly better than any competitor can provide. That's thanks to the transparent glazed C pillars of the teardrop shaped roof canopy. Get beyond the city limits and to begin with you worry a bit about the width of the car but it then becomes evident that you don't need to because the precise yet feelsome steering makes this car so easy to place on the road. Now McLaren's rejected the all-electric setup that many rivals now use in favour of an older tech but brilliant responsive electro-hydraulic system that really sets a standard in this segment. It makes you utterly confident about throwing this 720 into a corner. In the dry anyway, as you might know, you don't get the security of four-wheel drive here. That's the sort of thing that would help you out in comparably pricier versions of the less powerful Lamborghini Huracan, uh, which of course doesn't matter at all when the weather's fine. Dry tarmac delivers almost boundless levels of grip. Uh, that's unless you ignore our advice uh, to leave the track settings for circuit use and do something really stupid with the throttle midway through a bend. Uh, we do live in a country though where it rains for 30% of the year and when it's wet unrecoverable slides will be easily entered into by the overzealous so don't say we didn't warn you. There are no issues with the brakes though true to its track heritage the 720S comes a standard with carbon ceramic brake discs that uh, require quite a prod to function from cold. Once up at temperature though they offer consistent fade free stopping power and they're capable of braking this car from 125 miles an hour to a stop in just 4.6 seconds covering only 117 meters. In its own way, that stat is just as impressive as the 212 miles an hour top speed. Either way, you will, in the words of Senna, be flying very high. Streetside presence, every supercar needs that, and this one has it. The aluminium bodywork is shrink-wrapped around a carbon fibre structure to create a lean, sculpted shape that fuses visual drama, state-of-the-art technology, and aerodynamic purity. Designer Rob Melville says it was inspired by the Great White Shark. We certainly get that perspective here at the front where a distinctly predatory gaze is provided by visually dramatic digital LED headlights integrated within these so-called eye sockets. Now these, as you can see, are cut deep into the front fenders and they feature an aero duct to channel air to the radiators. The lamps themselves feature 17 individual LEDs and static adaptive technology that raises the beam pattern by half a degree for a better forward vision when you crest 68 miles an hour. And moving to the side gives you a better perspective on arguably this 720's biggest innovation. Uh, it's Monocage 2 carbon fibre composite chassis. Now all McLarens feature carbon fibre tubs that protect the lower part of the passenger cell, but what's different here is that this one extends around the roof area too, which obviously makes the whole structure stiffer. Now that is one key change over the old 650. The other is the absence of that previous model's side intakes, replaced here by ducting that's built into the double skin door that channels air into the high temperature radiators that cool that mid-mounted 4 litre V8 out back. The rear end looks exotic too, dominated as it is by these twin heat-stained exhaust pipes and an intricate lower diffuser through which the gearbox can be glimpsed. 
The big story here though is this full width aerofoil profile rear wing and this delivers 30% more downforce than the spoiler of the old 650S model was able to serve up. It's hydraulically operated with McLaren's clever air brake functionality and it has three operational positions. Now the wing is fully deployed in uh, just half a second when you slam on the anchors. The purpose there being to shift the aero balance by 20% to improve high speed braking stability. Uh, there's automatic 30% deployment in the so-called DRS mode and that clicks in to reduce drag when you're accelerating hard in a straight line up to maximum speed and you can manually deploy up to 80% of wing downforce by pressing the aero button on the dash if you want more optimal cornering performance. Now when you're ready to take a seat, unlocking the car initiates a welcome sequence and that sees the mirrors unfold, a sweep of the indicator lighting and courtesy light activation both in the cabin and in the engine bay. We should talk about these dihedral doors. After all, if you buy this car, your friends will. They're not the same as the ones McLaren's offered before. Uh, the 80 degree opening angle is lower, that's to help in underground car parks, and they require 155 millimeters less space at the side than is the case with the less a 570S model that increases accessibility when you're parked in tight spaces. Even better is the way that these cutouts in the roof allow the doors to open in such a way that you can step over the sill and down into the car rather than having to duck beneath the roof panel. Thanks to the monocage structure, the door sill is lower too. It all makes a big difference. And air ducts aren't the only things concealed within this car's flanks. The door handles are tucked away here too. Use them and you'll trigger a second series of events highlighting the various screens that dominate McLaren's most sophisticated and luxurious interior to date. As you'd expect, the central infotainment screen springs to life on entry, but the most eye-catching element is the folding driver display. And that rotates into its fully open position as you take a seat. Now, with this screen uh, fully facing towards you, quite a lot of information can be shown as part of various different styles of TFT readout. Uh, the main one featuring a central rev counter with a digital speedo, uh, your preferred driving settings, and gauges for oil and water temperature. A lower left-hand stalk off the steering column allows you to add phone, audio, uh, navigation and trip computer and also vehicle status data to the display. For focused track driving though, you'll prefer to slide this monitor back into its slim display mode. And that's a setting that provides a strip readout with only the minimum of required information. That's just like you get in an F1 car. The primary hub for driver interaction though is that central infotainment screen. It's an eight inch display that thankfully shares only its portrait format with the quirky iris setup that the brand has previously used and been roundly criticized for by us and by others. Uh, this 720's improved monitor has been developed for McLaren by JVC Kenwood and it's much easier to use. Unfortunately though, it still doesn't feature the kind of separate controller dial that we prefer and that means it has to be operated either by voice, by jabbing away at the touchscreen, or more likely via this circular menu button, which is surrounded by radio nav and phone switches on the left, and Bluetooth audio and ventilation options on the right. Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring is available. Uh, the Android Auto system isn't though. Uh, now this central screen is also used for the optional McLaren track telemetry package, and that allows you to analyze G maps, throttle positioning, and full lap history from your circuit exploits and even video footage recorded by interior track telemetry cameras. A slim leather stitch spur just below this monitor incorporates the main controls for the seven speed dual clutch automatic gearbox, while to the right of it lie the rotary controllers of the active dynamics panel that'll be familiar to McLaren regulars. Now there are two dials to get your head around. There's an upper H controller and that letter designates handling and a lower P controller that stands for powertrain. Both dials offer a choice of three settings. There's C for comfort, there's S for sport and T for track. Now between these these controllers lies the active button that you'll need to activate them and just above uh, the upper controller is the aero switch and that's for moving that huge rear wing. 
And once you've begun to understand all the technology, you might then get a chance to look around and appreciate your surroundings. Now, we referenced the luxury of this cabin earlier on, and it certainly does feel a cut above the interior you'll get in the 570S, especially if you can afford to spend a bit extra on the kind of premium stitched finishing and carbon fiber highlighting that features here. And you also get an evocative McLaren build badge hidden away by your right knee, although it's a bit of a pity that it doesn't feature a unique product number. Uh, the doors and the perfectly sculpted sport seats are beautifully trimmed in soft tactile leather. Uh, some of the switch gears machined from solid aluminium and the three spoke leather steering wheel can be color coordinated, carbon fiber enhanced or wrapped in Alcantara. At least it's not uh, festooned with complicated little buttons as it would be in a Ferrari and you get plenty of reach and rake adjustment. True, now there is the odd jarring note. The column stalks feel a little flimsy, for instance, but then alternative Italian supercars also have small areas of cabin finishing that really aren't quite up to scratch. Perhaps the main thing, though, that you'll carry away from a seat in here and a short drive is just how relatively easy it is to see out of this thing. Uh, supercar owners who are used to claustrophobic rear cabin pillars or combining bulkheads will look around in amazement. And now, the monocage carbon fiber upper structure with its teardrop canopy has allowed McLaren's designers to specify these strikingly slim roof pillars, while rearward vision is enhanced by transparent glazed seats pillars uh, and the way that the V8 engine has been mounted 145 millimeters lower than it was in the old 650S. It'll also help that this 720 is relatively compact with an overall length that's barely longer than a Porsche 911. You're still going to want to pay extra for the expensive parking sensor and rear camera package though. Further evidence of the designer's attention to detail is apparent when it comes to the question of cabin storage. And now you don't get a glove box, uh, door pockets, or an overhead compartment for your sunnies, but uh, beneath the spur of this lower center stack, there's a cup holder, there's a, a compartment for your phone, and a 12 volt socket. Plus there's a further cup holder just here between the seats, and that's in front of a storage box with two USB ports and an aux in point. There's also a little net between the seat shoulders for smaller items. Probably most useful though is this relatively large 210 litre area beneath the rear screen, which will be useful for stowing coats and shopping packages. Apparently a full size golf bag will fit in there too. You'll need this four way leather strap to keep items in place though, and that's another pricey extra. Now, finally, let's finish with a look at boot space, which in 720S models is all concentrated under the bonnet. Now, yes, these emotive vents, carbon fibre trimmed in this case, are just for show. Now, this compartment is 150 litres in size, which of course is pretty small, but it's probably enough to take a couple of airline-sized carry-on bags. The carriage of bulky stuff is pretty much out, but if you use soft luggage and pack carefully, you'll be surprised at just how much you can fit in. Uh, there's a 12-volt socket and a netted side compartment for a small ride. So, to the bottom line, you're going to need a £210,000 budget for this car. That's as a starting point. And that fee merely gets you the standard trim level. Around £10,000 more gives you a choice of two others performance, or as in this case, luxury. Now, the McLaren Special Operations Division also does a top velocity variant that has a package of unique touches. And that ups the price to an eye watering £335,000. Now, here our focus is on the coupe body style, but you can also talk to McLaren about the alternative spy open topped variant that was developed at the same time as this fixed top model. Whatever your version of choice, it will come with the same mechanical spec. Now your view on the figures just quoted will depend on your perspective and of course to some extent on your bank balance. Uh, given that a 720S is just as fast in every meaningful way as the working brand's old £900,000 P1 hypercar could be seen as a brilliant bargain. Then again you might point to the fact that a 720 lists at around £25,000 more than its arch rival Ferrari's 488 GTB. Now that does seem ambitious from what is after all still a new and aspiring brand. McLaren will respond to that by pointing out that the Marin an LO model fronts up with 50 PS less from its twin turbo V8 and by reminding you that the 720S has another level of driving technology at its disposal. 
Now, driving technology. That is what differentiates this 720s Super Series model category from the next one down in the working makers model hierarchy, the Sports Series with its various 570 variants. In the McLaren range, the model designation reflects the engine power output, but finding £60,000 more to go from a 570S to a 720S gets you more than just extra brute brake horsepower. This more exotic Super Series model features special active aerodynamics and more sophisticated hydraulic suspension. So what about uh, other direct rivals? Well, there aren't many. Uh, the Lamborghini Huracan is closer in concept price and power to a 570S. So for the Santa Gata brand, the unenviable task of facing down this 720S falls to their top Aventador model. Now this has 750 PS to call on from a six and a half litre V12, but the combination of yesteryear tech and that big engine's prodigious weight means that an Aventador will be slightly slower than this McLaren in every meaningful regard. And it costs over 60,000 pounds more. Might also point out that the next car up in Ferrari's lineup, the 741 PS F12 model, is also slower than a 720S, as almost any car you can think of, past or present, inevitably will be. Ultimately, the bottom line with a buyer thinking of spending this kind of money is that a car will probably be just one of a series of playthings being considered. So yes, you might be weighing up purchase of this McLaren against something similar, but you might equally well be thinking of it as an alternative to a new boat or perhaps even a light aircraft. If having spent a very pleasant few days considering those alternatives, you conclude that it is a 720S that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous this Woking make has been with the standard specification. So let's take a look at that now. Now the standard model comes with LED front and rear lights, uh, these lovely dihedral doors and leather seats that can be trimmed in either black Alcantara or black Napa leather. Uh, also reckon on getting keyless entry, track style carbon ceramic brakes and gorgeous bespoke car alloy wheels, 19 inches at the front and 20 inch rims at the back. Also included is the McLaren driver interface and that gives you an 8 inch centre dash infotainment screen and a folding driver display instrument binnacle with full and slim display modes. Uh, other standard features include a four speaker DAB audio system with navigation, voice control and Bluetooth plus iPod and iPhone integration. Want more? Then, as I mentioned earlier, your next step is to look at the alternative luxury or performance spec trim options. Now, both get a package of minor interior and exterior trimming changes, plus engine bay and interior ambient lighting. As for differences, well, on a luxury level car like this one, you get power adjustable heated seats, plus a special Bayer McLaren luxury interior with leather that's extended onto the dashboard and the rear luggage area. Go for a performance spec variant, and there's more carbon fiber trim, both inside and out, plus the seats are upholstered in a combination of Napa leather and Alcantara. The McLaren Special Operations Velocity model that tops off the lineup gets even more carbon fibre trimming and special paint options that take over 300 man hours to apply. That's why it costs over 60% more. Assuming you're sticking with one of the mainstream variants though, uh, the trim package supplied is likely to be merely the starting point from which you begin a journey of personalization. Before getting into that though, there are a few extras that we'd say you really have to have on this car. Now perhaps the most essential of these is the nose lift system. Now, that's pricey at just over £2,000, but it's essential if you live in a world where you're occasionally going to have to take your McLaren down a road with speed humps or potholes. Now this lets you raise the front suspension by 40 mils at speeds of up to 37 miles an hour. If the working maker is really serious about this 720 being everyday usable, then this is a feature that really ought to be standard, as ought front and rear parking sensors and the rear view camera. 2,000 pounds, I mean, are they joking? Now you'd also want a sophisticated stereo setup if you're paying the best part of a quarter of a million. And indeed, McLaren claims that its audio system is the lightest ever fitted to a car of this kind. Unfortunately though, the standard four speaker package is also lightweight when it comes to sound, which is why most customers are forced to upgrade to the 12 speaker Bowers and Wilkins setup that we've been trying here. This comes with the brand's trademark central tweeter, Kevlar speaker cones and carbon fiber woofer cones for ultra clean bass reproduction. Beyond that, it's really down to your personal preferences and the size of your bank balance. Now we think it would be sensible to get the vehicle tracking system and you'll probably want the throaty sports exhaust, although that will set you back nearly 5,000 pounds more. 
Now this car also has a powered steering column and we could also specify a 360 degree camera system, a car cover, floor mats and a volumetric alarm upgrade. Now if you're going to own this car you really need to take it on a track once in a while and if you're going to do that you might want to specify a racing harness, a fire extinguisher and the brilliant McLaren track telemetry package and that uses cameras around the car to produce video footage of your circuit driving and then you can uh, review that to improve your technique. The remaining options are really mostly about aesthetics. Uh, an extensive range of expensive carbon fibre parts are available for the interior. Uh, you can pick and choose between individual elements or you can opt for one of the carbon fibre upgrade packs. Now here we've got pack 3 uh, and that uses that trimming for the front air intakes and for the roof. You could end up spending plenty on wheels too. Now here, these have been upgraded to five twin spoke lightweight forged rims, but there are plenty of other options, uh, including even more exclusive 10 spoke super lightweight rims. Stealth, platinum and satin diamond cut rim finishes are all available. Uh, you're probably gonna be paying extra for paintwork too, uh, with 20 different shades on offer spread across the brand's special paint and elite paint ranges. Here we've got an Azores Elite finish, and that can at further extra cost be carried forward onto brake calipers, and they can be ordered in a number of coloured finishes. Owners wanting even more exclusive exterior paintwork can turn to McLaren Special Operations for an almost infinite range of colours. And for the cabin, well, you can add in plenty of carbon fibre here too. Uh, in this case, we've got it on the sill panels and the A-pillars. Plus, there are also options that can add it onto the seat backs and various primary and secondary interior components. Uh, we suggest you put a bit of thought into the seat spec too. Uh, the optional regular or touring spec carbon fibre racing seats look good and they grip you tightly, but they have fixed rather upright backrests. The standard seats are far more comfortable and everyday usable. Whatever your choice, the seat belts can be finished in black or orange. Enough with options, let's finish by taking a look at safety provision. Now we don't subscribe to what seems to be an unwritten law in this exalted section of the market that high performance cars like this one can forgo the latest camera driven safety systems in pursuit of weight saving. Brands like McLaren should at least offer buyers the option of adding in things like autonomous braking, lane departure warning, uh, driver fatigue systems and rear collision assist setups. There's nothing like that available here, nor can this car deliver an independent Euro NCAP crash test result. It hasn't been tested by that organization and it won't be. That isn't to say though that isn't potentially a very safe place to be should the worst happen though. The Mike Cage 2 carbon fiber central chassis tub is another aspect of this car that borrows from Formula One technology. It's claimed to be more crash resistant than any conventional chassis tub would be. That's just as well because if you lose control of a car like this, it's likely to be at much higher speeds. To try to prevent that happening in the first place, there are the usual ABS anti-lock brakes and an ESP traction control system with an interim mode that allows you a little leeway for tail out heroics, but will cut back in extremists if it looks like ambition is likely to get the better of your talent. Um, other safety orientated kit includes a tyre pressure monitoring system and hill hold assist, and that prevents the car from rolling backwards as you pull away on inclines. Plus, driver, passenger and side airbags are of course standard. Now we normally start this section with fuel and CO2 figures, but we won't do that here because the likely depreciation of this car will be a far greater factor in cost of ownership than petrol consumption or benefiting kind taxation. It's probably fair to say that uh, residual values for this model's predecessor, the old 650S, were a bit softer than McLaren had hoped for, with some customers cycling through their ownership periods quite rapidly and some grumbling about things like uh, the car's non-functioning iris infotainment system and the lack of aural fireworks. Those problems are less of an issue now and the 720S also gains from the undoubted halo effect of the mighty Senna Ultimate series model that sits just above it in the Woki Makers lineup. Add to that critical acclaim that seems largely in accord in saying that the 720S is a vehicle that will take the Ferrari 488 GTB's trousers down and administer a severe spanking and you have a recipe for improved retained values. McLaren certainly claims that to be the case, and that's something that's reflected by the relatively attractive lease deals that the company offers. 
Uh, the Woking Maker reckons customers add an average of around £25,000 worth of options to each of its cars and that'll happen again here creating a residual value impact which is often overlooked when you're calculating depreciation percentages. Now some extras will uh, probably add to your car's value uh, things like the sports exhaust and the Bowers and Wilkins audio system but other expensive additions could have relatively little value impact when the time comes to sell uh, so things like extensive carbon fiber trimming and special paint finishes etc bear all this in mind up front and beyond residuals, well, you won't be imagining that this 720S will be inexpensive to run, and you'll be absolutely right. Uh, even with managed expectations, though, we were a little disappointed by the quoted figures. Uh, despite a standard engine start-stop system, you're looking at 26.4 mpg on the combined cycle and 249 grams per kilometre of CO2. That's the same, by the way, as you'll get from the lesser 3.8-litre 570S model, and that's a car that weighs 18 kilos more. To give you some perspective, the other contender in this segment with a 4-litre twin-turbo V8, Ferrari's 488 GTB, and that weighs 56 kilos more, manages 24.8 mpg and 260 grams per kilometre. Both cars really ought to do better. Can't help noticing that an Audi R8 from the next class down that uses an old-school 5.2-litre V12 and weighs more than 170 kilos more than this McLaren still records pretty much the same kind of running cost figures. On the plus side, the quoted 720S readings are vastly better than those delivered by the only other car that you could count as a potential rival to this one, Lamborghini's Aventador. Now that manages only 16.4 mpg on the combined cycle and it chugs out 394 grams per kilometre of CO2. Ouch! <laughs> It might also be worth mentioning that the 720's efficiency returns are slightly enhanced over those of the old 650S and that managed 24.2 mpg and 275 grams per kilometre. Likely owners almost certainly won't care a fig about any of that, but even they might notice the substantial 37% benefiting kind tax rating that a 720S incurs, meaning annual tax bills of over £20,000. Fuel benefit will probably add a further £3,000 or so to this, then there's a first year road tax VED charge of £2,000, followed by a £450 annual charge that incorporates this uh, car's luxury premium until the sixth birthday, at which point the VED rate reverts to £140. Group 50 insurance means that buyers will be keeping their brokers in Beaujolais too. Of course, uh, many owners will acquire this McLaren as just one of a stable of models and they will have negotiated their own multi-car deal with their insurer. Continuing with the bad news, you don't get the seven-year free servicing package that Ferrari offers, so you'll have to pick up the tab yourself for routine maintenance, and that'll be required every 12,400 miles or 12 months, depending on which comes around sooner. Uh, every second year, the car will need a full oil change too. Um, with expensive consumables and high labour rates, you'll certainly need to know what you're letting yourself in for. What else? Well, the paint surface is warranted for three years, visible cosmetic corrosion for five years, and perforation corrosion of the vehicle body is covered for 10 years. As you'd expect, the car comes with a three-year unlimited mileage warranty, and on request, that can be extended to a maximum of 12 years and 100,000 miles. Uh, whichever package you go for, roadside assistance is included too, uh, that in the unlikely event of a breakdown, will recover your McLaren to the nearest dealer or provide you with a replacement car to let you carry on your journey. Should you be involved in a collision, you'll be pleased to know that the aluminium body panels uh, will be a lot cheaper to fix than the carbon fibre or composite items used in the brand's pricey models. Uh, the Pirelli P0 tyres will be fearsomely expensive to replace though, so do bear that in mind before you go track day showboating. On paper, McLaren has always had the measure of its rivals. In reality though, its offerings have often lacked the emotive drama that characterizes the market's most desirable supercars. So it's refreshing to report that the 720S delivers exactly that. 
Its predecessor, the 650S, was a car obviously faster than lesser McLaren models, but not necessarily better. Without an empty test track, it was difficult to appreciate its extra aerotech and proactive chassis control system, and it simply didn't have the street-side presence of an Italian rival in the way that this 720 does. This car has its faults, of course. Graduate from a Ferrari Portofino into a 488 GTB, or from a Lamborghini Huracan into an Aventador, and you really feel a class above. McLaren's need to make three different model series from the same basic architecture means that moving up from a 570S into a 720S might not give you quite the same sense of achievement. The two cars do, after all, share plenty in basic character, and each has need of an engine capable of more dramatic aural accompaniment. Now, the Italian opposition knows how to serve that up, and we don't doubt that future McLarens will too. If this car teaches us anything, it's that the Woking maker learns quickly. Which is just the point. The British maker is sometimes portrayed as a high-handed, somewhat arrogant company that knows it knows best. The 720S proves beyond any doubt that that's just a lazy stereotype. McLaren listens, and it listens to the people that count, its customers. Buyers gave the brand a wish list of 650S improvements, and the combination of these, along with the latest in mind-warping technology from Woking, has produced a world-class result. It redefines what a supercar should be. Beautifully.